This video is gonna be about gear. I thought it might be interesting to just give you some insight on some of the stuff that I've bought over the last year and you know things that have really, really stood out and shined as very, very valuable um, assets to me as a photographer. As photographers, we all kind of geek out on gear. It's it's one of those things where, you know, you get really excited when when these new products and technologies come out, and it's it's really been amazing over the years, just accumulating different things. And sometimes things are like a, a big letdown, and sometimes things really exceed your expectations. And I wanted to make a video on just a few of the things that I've bought in, in the last year that have far exceeded my expectations and have been extremely valuable to me as a photographer. The first one is this little tripod by Peak Designs. And this is something that I th thought long and hard about buying. I was gonna buy it, then I wasn't gonna buy it. I didn't really need it, so I thought. And it was very, very intriguing. I've had other travel tripods, and this one just seemed different. And it's at the top of my list for things that I bought that it has just exceeded my expectations. It's so light and so compact um, that I take it with me everywhere. It, it's not a burden to carry and it has a built in Arca Swiss style head. Now, the one thing with this head is you do have to use the some of the uh, Arca Swiss plates will not fit in here but the Peak Designs one fit in here and they also fit in all of the Arca Swiss. So I've had to make a little bit of a compromise in that regard, but it's not a big deal because the only one, the, the only camera that I use like a, a bigger Arca Swiss plate on is my large format, which I don't use on here anyway. I did not expect to use it with my, my Hasselblad, but it works, it's almost the perfect size. Now I don't wander off far when my Hasselblad's on it, but it is very sturdy, very solid and just, it, it's been an amazing little tripod. This is the carbon fiber version, but I'm sure the aluminum one is just as good. So one of the main reasons I have fallen in love with that tripod so much is it works so well with my Hasselblad. I can set it up very quickly, it's very sturdy. I did some really long exposures with it um, and like fully extended and it it's just, for the size, weight, and compactness, it is just an amazing little tripod. Now there are cheaper tripods out there, but for the money I have found that this has provided uh, provided a ton of value and they've just done an amazing job um, engineering and making this tripod. Now, since we're on the topic of tripods, this is my uh, bigger tripod. This is a, a, a Enduro, yeah, Enduro tripod, but I want to point out one of my favorite purchases of the year are these feet. <laughs> Especially if you're in an area like me where it's icy and snowy all the time, you're gonna want spikes on your tripod feet. It's just gonna make everything sturdy. The last thing you want is when you have your camera set up, you don't want it sliding around on the ice. Now these tripods do come with feet that screw in and you can, you know, you can switch them out and do things like that. So I believe this tripod came with a set of rubber feet and a set of spikes, but I don't wanna be out there. I don't wanna be changing the feet all the time. So the next thing I did, I bought, and I believe it was made by um, Ben Rowe. There were feet and there were rubber and they screwed, they, you kind of threaded them and the spike would thread through. But I used them on the beach a couple times and they seized up. So they were kind of a no-go, like it, it, the, it, awesome idea but as soon as you got sand or grit or anything in there, they just, they, they locked up and, and they were unusable. So I did a little bit of searching and found these, where these thread in, and then they just have these rubber feet that go over the top. And they work amazing as rubber feet, and then if you need, um, you know, you're out there, it's just as simple as popping them off. The other thing is you, you gotta keep track of the rubber feet once you do pop them off, but it makes your tripod very sturdy in the ice and other situations where you might need spikes. All right, the next piece of gear that I bought, it's the 135L EF Canon lens. A lens that I 
rented once a long time ago. And then I always kind of had my eye on it. I was like, oh, I really like that lens. I would like to have it, but never, never purchased it. Now this year I finally did using the, the Canon R5 and the EF adapter. And that lens has surprised me so much. I love, love, love it. It's for portraits. It's, I don't know if I've ever had a, a portrait lens that, that comes close. Um, so that, that lens just, it, in my mind, it stands out as just probably one of the best purchases I have made, especially at the price I paid for it. I think I paid seven, seven hundred dollars for it. I mean, and it's just a top notch pro lens. It's it's really amazing. Now, I have to include this. This is the new M1 Max MacBook Pro. I am including that just because I have been anticipating purchasing uh, a new laptop for a long time. And this has made been not only a big commitment, but it um, it's a big upgrade from what I was using. I was using a 2016 MacBook Pro. I nearly purchased one last year, then found out that they were coming out with their own you know chipset uh, for the MacBook Pros, and so I haven't had a lot of experience with it. I've had it for uh, about a month or so now. What I can say is it's pretty nice. Now, if I back up to 2016, I said the same thing about my new my new computer then. Now this one I would say is nicer, like, you know, when I compared the the initial setup and feeling, like I do think this one's nicer and has a lot more, more potential. I edit my videos in Adobe Premiere and I did a few videos now in it where I sat on my couch and edited full HQ 4K R5 footage and it, it, it really did cut through it like butter. And I was sitting on my couch I'm battery power and I edited for four or five hours straight, you know, just, just from start to finish making, you know, one of these videos and I, the battery was still at like half power, you know, it, the, the fans did not ever turn on. So everything is snappy. Everything works good. Now I will say that I've just recently, like it's been starting to tell me that I'm out of virtual memory for some reason, which makes absolutely no sense. Cause I've got 64 gigs. I, I mean, the thing's pretty maxed out. Um, so I don't know what's going on with that, but overall, just a really, really good experience uh, working in Lightroom on it, um, like small edits and things like that, just phenomenal, like really fast and snappy. So the computer is overall amazing with the experience that I've had with it so far. I am very interested to see how well that holds up in the future, you know, one year, two years from now, but I, I can see that this easily being a a very, very powerful computer for, for at least a couple of years. And that's all I, I can really expect. And while we're on the topic of computers, I love, love, love. Now this is by far the cheapest. I think this is like a $3 app, three or $4 app, but I love this app. So for the longest time, I've got just a plethora of hard drives hooked up to my docking station at home, including here. And what happens is like, I don't even know if it, maybe it's a dozen, but I have a lot of hard drives hooked up, you know, for, for my archive drives, for my portfolio drives, for my working drives, to just video drives, to backup video drives. I'm sure you know how it is. You, you can't really have enough hard drive space. And I like to have uh, RAID drives hooked up for most of my stuff. So it's redundant and I can have a, a backup drive kind of swap between my studio and my house. Uh, what, I, what happens is I have a lot of different drives mounting and unmounting all the time. Now this little app, it's called Mountain. And what this can do is it not only you can, um, from the, the top menu bar, you can um, mount and unmount your drives. And the preference is you can set it to what hard drives will mount when you plug your computer in. So say when I plug my computer into my docking station at home and say there's 12 hard drives, I can just have the my, my working drive and say my Lightroom catalog drive mount, just those two. Because what I've found in the past is when I have all the, the hard drives just constantly mounted, it's like the, the controller or something inside the computer. Every once in a while, the finder window will just kind of freeze up and you'll get a, a spinning ball and it'll be like reconfiguring, trying to figure out like what's where. And you know, that takes a few seconds sometimes. And anytime you have to sit there and stare at your computer while it's trying to figure itself out, like it's annoying and it's lost time. So this has really been uh, an app that I wish I would have found sooner, but I did just find it, um, in the last month. So I haven't used it extensively, but so far I'm very, very much in love with it. Like I, 
I, I really like it. So in a working situation, I sit down, I plug my computer in, the drives I need, say the one or two um, external hard drives I need automatically mount. And then when it's time to like, say, export a drive from Lightroom to my um, archive catalog or, or export files to my portfolio catalog, I can just go in the thing and just click mount and it mounts that catalog. I can do what I need to do and then I just unmount it and good to go. And I think, again, the coolest part is the fact that I can just set in the preferences which ones automatically mount. And then the other ones are just there in standby and I can mount them whenever I need to. So I had thought about you know, just using, like in the past, I was like, oh, well, I could just go into disk utility and mount and unmount drives, but that doesn't keep them from all mounting um, on plugin. This was just an easy, very cost-effective solution and made it one of my best purchases of the year. Another piece of gear that we've purchased for the studio um, and specifically to make, uh, you know, in portrait photography are these AD300 lights. This is the Flashpoint Explorer AD300 lights. Now I bought, I got these from Adorama and I actually have two of them. They came in a set and I was hesitant again on these. You know, I have AD200s, I have the AD600 and I've always liked their flash systems, but I was having some reliability issues and wasn't really, I wasn't sure if I was gonna keep using them or not. Um, the Godox system or the Flashpoint system. And then I bought these um, kind of on a whim saying, you know what, those, those look interesting. And they're just total game changers for me. They are fast, they are super light. Um, they work in high speed sync just amazingly and they have a lot of power. For this little package, they have a ton of power. And I tell you what, the reason that I, they made this little list here is probably because I have two of them and I shoot pretty fast when I'm shooting portraits. I shoot a lot and I often shoot in high speed sync. And what happens with these is they get really hot with all any flashes. When you're in high speed sync and you're just wham, 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 you know, shooting away, the fans are gonna kick on, they're gonna overheat and they kind of, you'll still just start misfiring left and right. And it's like, okay, the, the, the lights had enough. So for the first, you know, so many shots, you can just, you know, rapid fire and they're good to go. Um, and then all of a sudden the heat issues catch up and it, you're just putting too, too much strain on, on the light and then it will start misfiring. Well, these little guys are so light, I can literally take two of these when we're out shooting portraits. And when one heats up and starts acting up, I literally just pop the other one in and start shooting with that one. And this one cools down, I can switch back over and I can just shoot as fast as I want with high speed sync to a point, but I can shoot very fast as, you know, as much as I need to. And when this one acts up, I switch it out for the other one. And it has just, it's been a game changer because in the past it's like, well, what do you do? You have one light and you're like, well, I guess we just need to slow down the shooting or we gotta, you know, do something else. So this has been such a cost efficient way of just being able to shoot as much as I want with, um, off camera flash um, with these. So I, I, I can't highly recommend these enough. If you're looking for off camera flash, I think the kit that I bought through Adorama, it came with some soft boxes and other things. It was, I think under a thousand dollars. I think you can buy one of these for like 400. I don't I, I could be a 450 ish. It's so worth the money, so worth the money. So that is why these made the list. And last but not least, I mean, there are a lot of other things. Clearly, you you know, you buy a lot of gear. I buy a lot of gear um, throughout the year that that should get honorable mentions, but I'm just gonna keep it short and sweet. And the last one is going to be, whoa, the Nanlite, the Nanlite Pavo Tube 26C. And again, I bought a kit of these and so it came with two, it came with these cool little grids, but these, um, they're just handy. You know, they, they have little magnets in them so you can stick them to anything metal. You know, they dim way down. You can change the, the white balance on them. They're full RGB. They do special effects. They're just a very, very, very handy light. And I love these little grids. I mean, these are just really, really cool. And the cool thing is, is they, they're so small. You know, and they're very, for how big they are, they're very, very bright and they just, you know, you can take them with you. That's the biggest thing. You know, you, you want 
gear that you're gonna take with you and use. So that fits the bill. And again, I think I bought a two pack of these um, that came with the grids. It came with like these little mounting stands. Um, I don't remember where, I think I bought those from Adorama as well. And very reasonably priced. I think you can buy one of those for around $70. I think the, the little kit that I bought was you know, maybe 200, a little bit under 200, um, but just really handy lights to have. They're so small that you can just throw them in your bag, take them with you, and you've always got nice light. That is gonna do it for my 2021 best gear purchases that I made. That's what we'll call it. You know, let me know in the comments below, have you had any gear that you bought this year that you were just blown away and said, wow, that was money really, really worth spent because that's the kind of gear that I want to find. I don't want to be like, oh crap, wish I wouldn't have bought that, you know, because that's that's never a good feeling. So anyway, I want to wish everybody an amazing, amazing new year and um, wish you all the most success. Take care.